Well, hello there, and thank you for joining us again today. Today's video is a little bit different than what we have done in the past. This particular video focuses mainly on the 2016 BMW C650 GT. It's a purchase that I made back in 2016 as a brand new bike, and I wanted to go over some of the features and some of the opinions that I have on the bike and I'm not going to pull any punches. There are a few things that I'm not satisfied with, but I'll leave that up to you. So let's begin. On the front end of the bike, it has 15 inch wheels, both front and back. They are a little bit pricey to get replaced. I just had them replaced at a cost of, I think, $300 between both, give or take a few. In addition to that, the other huge benefit on this bike much like a motorcycle of today, it has dual disc brakes in the front, a single disc brake in the back, but it really has some great stopping potential. Aside from that, one of the things that I don't really like here on the front is that although it has dual headlights, only one of the headlights is lit during the day as opposed to my former bikes where the lights themselves were both lit. Only time they're both lit is when the brights are on. So that's something I would think that maybe BMW might take into account, maybe in their latter versions of this particular bike. But that's pretty typical of BMW. Also on the front of the bike, which is really a pretty cool feature, it does have the ability to turn in the mirrors. So if you're in a tight spot for parking, like I am at my place, I can turn the mirrors in, get out safely, and, and then turn them out, of course. Everything on the mirrors is manual. It would have been nice to have sort of like the windshield where you could adjust the mirrors automatically. That being said, when you look at the, the windshield, one of the cool things about this windshield is it does move up and down and you have that complete adjustment on the hand grip. Speaking of the hand grips, this is another great feature. The hand grips are heated. That is really nice. I wish that BMW would have done a little bit more for the hand grips in the fact that, yeah, the bottom of my hands get warm, but the top still stay pretty cold. <laughs> in any event, it is a nice feature. It has three positions for heat. Also, if you take a look on the back, if you bring that camera closer, Doug, and that is my son, Doug, who's actually filming here. He is also a rider. He rides a Honda 750 Shadow. On the seat, both the rider themselves has three positions of heat. That is really nice. Even in Arizona, it gets cold in the early morning or at night this time of year. Today happens to be beautiful. It's 75 degrees. The passenger themselves has a two-zone heating switch next to them that they can also adjust independently of the front seat. If you take a look at the, and I'll remove my helmet here, if you take a look at the front panel, I'll turn the bike on so you can see. You're not going to see everything on here, but except for the speedometer, Everything is digital. You have a trip advisor that you can set. It shows you oil pressure. It shows you gas. It shows you tire pressure on both front and rear tires independently. Now this bike has 10,586 miles on it. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about why it does in just a moment. Also in the front here, one of the things I really like is the accessibility to all the controls. It has emergency flashers, which is really nice. It also has directionals, of course, the horn, the high beam, the trip advisor, the information panel. On this side, you'll find you have the heated grip control, the heated seat control, and a couple of cool things I really like about this bike is if you take a look and you can see some of the stuff that I have already stored, it kind of has like glove boxes like we used to have in, in cars years ago. And these glove boxes are not very deep, but they can hold things like cell phone keys and such. 
can see my keys are in there. A little bit of money. This one does not lock, but the other one over here, it does lock. Once the ignition is locked on the bike, this one does lock, and I'll show you. So now I'm gonna lock the ignition by pressing down and turning to the left. You gotta jiggle the handlebars a little bit. There we go. Take out the key. Now you can see that this glove box is locked and cannot open. That's a nice safety feature. The engine on this bike is a 650cc engine. Early on in the 2016, the bike did have a recall. And it had an engine recall, it had a cable recall here for braking, and it had another recall. But you know what? They took the bike in, they repaired the engine, it, it did end up with some bent valves and, and things of that nature, so some internal issues. But they did take care of it. In this case, it was in about three months. I thought that was a little bit long from the dealership, but at least when I got it back, it, it definitely was taken care of. Another issue that I currently have on this bike, and it might be because of the age of the, of the bike, I have what I think is belt slapping, where you can hear this clacking and clattering when I take off. Until the bike heats up, I get the clattering. But after that, this thing takes off on a dime. So I've got to have that looked into. If you get a belt replaced on these, it's suggested to get the MRP or the Gates Kevlar belt. They last about three times longer than the, the rubber belt that they currently come with. But that being said, most bikes a lot of times come with a less expensive belt. This is a belt, CVT, and a chain drive. So that's a little bit different, kind of a hybrid of sense. And not a lot of scooters come with that type of drivetrain. Once you have the belt replaced, make sure you go in there and ask them to replace the rollers on the CVT and get the lighter rollers. They'll last a lot longer. So let's take a look at the inside here where we have storage on the bike. I love this. Press the key down, turn it to your right. It releases and you can see there's quite a bit of storage in here. Usually you can have two helmets in here, but honestly, when I go grocery shopping on this bike, that's where the groceries go. And I've actually had up to four bags of groceries in here, which is pretty incredible. You can see how deep this is. Some of my accessories like my gloves are in here. I keep my bag in here and I keep the manual. One of the things I really like about this manual, I think they did a great job. Of course, it's in multiple languages, but they gave a lot of detail on the bike, how to change oil, all the stats and the specifics about the engine. And, and I got to tell you, it's a pretty easy read, even though this is, of course, a German bike. That being said, I think if you take a look at it, I'll just bring this up a little closer. You can get an idea. Let me pull this up here. You can get an idea that this is pretty well thought out and put together nicely. The other thing that you want to make sure is if you decide that you wanted to get more information and details on the bike, there's a lot of YouTube video from BMW Service Techs that will go through things like how to change the, the belt, how to change the oil and such. Some things I believe should be left to a certified technician. These bikes are specific. They are detailed and they are very complicated in their, their build. This has a, an aluminum frame. The bike is a little bit heavier than most. I like that. That was one of the reasons I bought it. It weighs over 550 pounds, but it's very stable in windy conditions. We get that a lot here in Arizona going up around the twisties and the turnies in the mountains, like you saw on the last video going up to Tortilla Flat. But I have to tell you, for a ride on this bike, it is absolutely awesome. I know a lot of guys that ask me a couple of questions. Some of the things they say to me, what is that? Is it a bike? Is it a scooter? What is it? And I have to explain to them a bike, but it has all the attributes and the comforts of a touring motorcycle. 
that being said, I thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate your time and I hope you got a little bit more information out of this and maybe helped you make a decision on what to purchase. So get out there and ride safe, helmet always. I wear glasses because it's required here in Arizona, but you can see how I'm dressed. This is not a really good way to dress when you're on a bike and on two wheels. God bless you all and thank you again for watching Scooter Pops.